All right, uh, I did a video on this a while back. Uh, it's a frequency doubler and um, I didn't quite understand how it worked and uh, my gracious viewers gave me some comments that led me to the right place. Um, this is the one that has the fancy uh, the fancy circuit on it. Okay, some RF voodoo magic. Um, and so um, there is an actual um, paper from Hewlett Packard on step recovery diode doublers. So uh, this thing is a step recovery diode and uh, application 989 tells you how the thing works. Talks about how the f doubling works. Um, the I did a video once on step recovery diodes. Remember to put it in. Um, so you put some bias on it and then there's like an avalanche in the step recovery. It goes kawaka and uh, springs back. There's a particular um, quick response. They're great for making um, very fast edges. Um, but since you're making a very fast edge, it makes a whole bunch of harmonics. And it talks about which diode to use. Of course, they want you to use a Hewlett Packard diode. And uh, so uh, they talk all about the math and they give you a whole bunch of theory and everything. But look at this. Look at that. <laughs> okay. And look at that. Yeah, it's the same thing. Or almost. It's close. Um, but it explains how this thing works, okay? And um, I think whoever designed this just used this paper and said, hey, that works for them, it's going to work for us. So um, there is a section in the front, so that this is the input, this is the output. There's a section in the front, those lines there, and that is a low pass filter. And then these lines over here is a bandpass filter, okay? So why do you want a low pass filter and a high pass filter? Okay, a low pass filter, you're going to double things. And so let's say you're gonna double one gigahertz to two gigahertz, okay? So you've got one gigahertz coming in and you want two gigahertz going out. And so you put a low pass filter here of say 1.1 gigahertz. So, you know, it'll let through one gigahertz, but um, the reason that you want it to attenuate is that if this thing, this step recovery diode generates harmonics, those harmonics will go in both directions. And if they try to go this way, they run into this low pass filter and they won't make it through. Okay, so that's what it's for. Not so much in this direction, but in that direction that you want to attenuate or actually what you want to do is you want to have this um, filter appear as an open, okay? If it's a good low pass filter, it will look like a wire in one direction and an open in the other direction, right? Or frequencies, right? It, at the low frequencies, it'll look like a wire and at the high frequencies, it'll look like an open. Well, what happens when you have a transmission line as an open? It reflects 100% of the energy back the other way. So if this thing generates the two gigahertz and it goes that way, it'll find this open. It'll go, oops, can't go that way. And it'll bounce and it'll go that way. So it turns everything around and goes this direction. So that's the reason for the low pass filter. Now, what's the reason for the band pass filter? Well, once again, you're going to have this very, very step, very, very fast pulse, which generates a whole bunch of harmonics. This band pass filter picks off your second harmonic and says, ah, Let's just pass the second harmonic and throw everybody else away. So that's the way it works. Uh, one keeps it from going that away and one makes it go that away and attenuates everything else. So yeah, it's pretty simple once you figure it out. Um, now there is this voodoo, voodoo magic here for the, um, uh, the strip line architecture and stuff, but you know, those are all these days you just you put punchos into calculators and stuff. You probably had to figure it out back in the day, but um, yeah, that's per pretty cool. Now, uh, another viewer uh, suggested that I do something, that, and I don't know why I didn't think of it before, because I did another video where uh, some viewer said, hey, you should just use your VNA, and, I, and I, I don't know why I didn't think of it this time. But what you do 
is you look at the output, you put a VNA on the output, and you go in and measure S11 into here, and the first thing it sees is this bandpass filter, and the S11 will be perturbed by that bandpass filter, and you should be able to read right off the screen what that frequency is, right? And so I did that, I put a VNA on it, and uh, I found uh, a couple dips. Uh, there's a broadband dip right around um, 3.225 gigahertz. And then there's another dip up around four something or other, right? But if you look at 3.225 and you divide it by, you know, 3.2 and divide it by two, you get 1.6. So 1.6 input, 3.2 output. And if you look at the part number on this thing, it's 16845. So it's the 16 gigahertz. It, and so, anyway, I think, you know, I don't like coincidences. I think that's probably, it's 1.6 in and 3.2 out or something like that. Okay, close to those frequencies. And um, so, yeah, and that seemed to be where it was working too. I think when I was playing with it, right around 1.6, I think it was 1.58 or something I think I was playing with. Anyway, um, yeah, it was it was going out. Now, one of the problems was with my measurement equipment, my spectrum analyzer stops at 3.2 gigahertz. So if it, if it was right on the edge there, I was keeping it a little bit shorter than that, but I think it is 1.6 in 3.2 out, okay? And uh, yeah, so, uh, the input section uh, kind of looks like a this if you did it in a lump lump uh, a component. So there's a, I measured the input capacitor to 110 picofarads, and then there's this uh, resistor capacitor inductor uh, down over here, and then it goes into this uh, uh, low pass filter, which capacitor inductor capacitor, and so. Uh, that's these big guys over on the left. Then it goes into the uh, step recovery diode, which is here, generates the harmonics. The harmonics go flying everywhere. This stops them from going that direction. It bounces them and makes them go that direction. And then there's a funny little component that I didn't recognize the first time around, but everybody pointed out that was a, um, that was a variable capacitor, smallest, teeny, tiniest ones I've ever seen. I guess one guy said he actually had the tool that you need to, to turn that thing, but he couldn't find it. But um, yeah, so there's this uh, 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 capacitor here that lets you tune the bandpass filter. And then there's a, a, a interleaf step uh, I forget what kind of filter this is called, but if you think of it like an antenna, it's kind of like a Yagi antenna where you have a whole bunch of uh, elements, some driven and some reflect, uh, some driven and some directing, right? Elements, directors, uh, and uh, and that's what's kind of going in here. There'll be a certain uh, impedance uh, for the length of these um, sections in the bandpass filter and it'll resonate at a particular frequency and that allows the uh, uh, bandpass filter work that way. A little more fancy than that in mathematics, but uh, that's sort of what is go what's going on there. They're going to be quarter wave, effect effective quarter waves at the frequency you want the, um, that you want the bandpass filter to be. Anyway, I thought it was very interesting. Um, got to know a little bit more about this. Try to, I'll try to put a link down below on this uh, application note if you want to read it and learn all about uh, step recovery diode doublers. But yeah, very interesting.